All right, guys. Hey, YouTube and Twitch, what's up? Hey, Twitch, say hi to YouTube. YouTube, say hi to Twitch. I know how we do. This is analysis from the Tate Memorial. This was the warm-up tournament right before the best tournament of my entire life, which was the U.S. Masters that we're going to cover for the YouTube channel. But right now, we're going to do the warm-up tournament that was for that tournament, the U.S. Masters. This one is round six, so if you're following from the Tate Memorial in round five, I might play in, uh, I think I drew that game. Or, uh, yeah, I drew. I drew that last game. So I drew the International Master uh, Tour Race with the Queen's Indian, actually. And then this game I played right after. But this is a crazy game. Following that nasty Knight of 3, B3 sacrifice. Beat the highest rated player in our section, the IM. Very strong International Master. Was able to sack some pieces and, and deliver uh, some some blows there. Won that game. And this is uh, a, a, this game is very instructive here, too, because they came together. So... I beat his buddy. Let me tell you a quick story. Um, this guy is Augusto Cesar Campos Jimenez from Cuba. Very, very strong. He came in. He was like the second highest rated or something like that. 23 something. Like very high 23s. And his buddy that I beat, if y'all didn't see that, bro, go back and watch that Nimzo Larson. Bro. Oh my goodness. But do you remember that game? And I played Rook D6 and just like ended the whole game. I just ended it. Rook D6. My I sacked basically it was like an immortal game. My queen's hanging, the rook is hanging. But if you take anything, you're you're made it right. That's very beautiful game, and you can catch that. I think that's round four actually, to be honest. So I think it's round four. But in this game, in round six, they came together and they're both from Cuba, right? So this is his buddy. So I played <laughs> I played knight f three the same thing because I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna hit y'all with the same thing. Like, you know what I mean? Why not? I'm going to play the same thing. See what happens. So he goes uh c5, I go b3, knight c6, bishop b2, d5. I go e3, and he goes a6. And this a6 move is actually very strange. It's actually not played a lot, to be honest here. This is a move that is just kind of a sideline, a big a sideline of a sideline. You have many moves here. You have f6, you have like knight f6, you have e6, all these different moves. But a6 is very, very rare. So he played a6. I'm like, okay, not sure what you're really doing. So I go d4, knight f6, and then d takes c5, right? So I can um, open up the diagonal. e6, knight b to d2, bishop takes bishop b3, b5. And here I'm like, oh, cool. Like, I get the position I like. I like these type of positions here. I can put a knight on e5, and etc. Everything's uh, quite equal, though. I go a3, just stopping any knight b4 business. Bishop b7, um, castles. Castles back, and then queen to e2. So I go queen e2. I want to play e4, rookie eight, quite an easy uh, and simple game. So I think I moved a little fast here, but it actually worked. And I went e4, and then watch this. This guy's strong, bro. He plays e5, bro. What is going on, Bruh. Right now, is white to move? What do you play in this position, bro? Whoa, hold on, bro. Hold on. Didn't expect that. I moved a little too fast. I'm not gonna lie here. Moved a little too fast, and he hit me with some activity that I was not liking. Oh, that was a very nice move. That was a very, very nice move. After e5, what do you play in this position, chat? I guess rook a to d1. Okay, rook a to d1. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to allow this. Big problems here. Big problems here. What I'm supposed to play is a C4. It's better. I want E4. Because I'm like, he can't go E5. And then when they go E5, you're like, something's wrong. Unless he blundered or something's wrong. And as for Master, Emery Tate was a well known player who was known as a giant killer. He beat many GMs. He played chess and tactical attacking style and played for a decisive result. This is a memorial honors his memory. Thank you, Pepper Picante. That's correct. That's exactly right. And of course, that Knight of 3 B3 game that I played against uh, Augusto's buddy um, here, Leortis, I was able to beat him. Nice. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you too. Merry Christmas to all of you watching. Happy holidays, chat, as well, as we uh, go through this game. So after the E5 move, B4. Correct. I go B4. I actually go B4 just to like put a Knight on B3 or something. He goes Bishop B6, and then I go Rook AD1. So I get all the pieces active. I know an E5 is possible. He goes Queen C7, staying very flexible, right? I take on D5. He he goes Knight D4, which is very tactical. I'm like, bro, he's on me. 
but it's, it's actually quite equal. They like black by just a hair, like 0.5. Knight takes d4, e takes d4, queen f3. We go here, and everything's still quite equal, but of course, black is doing fine. But he has this weakness here that I can practically, practical chances, this is a weakness that I can deal with, and I can probably, you know, end up winning it at some point. Definitely played this wrong, though. So knight takes d5. I go bishop e4, and it's still quite equal. Rook to e5 was a nasty one. I'm like, dang, bro, you about to, like, what? rook e5? Like, what are you on? Who is this guy? Rook e5, bro. I'm like, whoa, hold on, bro. Hey, relax. Relax. Rook e5. That's a, whoa. Right, so I play queen g3 to pin him. That's not really a pin. I have to get out of the way because he has, like, rook h5s and, like, all this crazy stuff going on. So he goes rook to d8 to defend everything. I had a chance here. I moved back. I went bishop d3. I want to put my knight back on f3. It's, it's very positional still. I mean, and that's also tactical. He goes rook h5, and my best move is actually just capturing and playing g3. Playing the end game and trying to... I mean, what, what, what I should do here, honestly, is after takes, bishop takes g3. Right. This is annoying because of the diagonal. But this is a very weak pawn. I can play bishop e4, bishop g2. Right, bishop e4, bishop g2, knight b3, attack the pawn. A, a very easy plan. Easy plan. I like tactical routes. So I went knight e4. He went queen c6, eyeing me. Eyeing me still. Rook f to e1. I played the best move here. Um, actually, sorry, I was supposed to go rook d to e1. Believe it or not. Rook f to e1 actually loses. Um, the bishop c7. I was in time trouble here. So he hit me with bishop c7. I knew I was in trouble. Because I forgot about h2. So many questions being asked. Yeah, this is a, a tough game, right? A tough game, bro. They sort of follow top G. That's the place why I get you why you didn't. Exactly. It, it just doesn't feel that good, right? It doesn't feel that good. It's very positional there. And I also played it wrong as well. I just didn't know what to do against this early a6. I was definitely kind of not, not out of book, but like an unfamiliar. Like I was just like, but this is not played. It's very strange. But okay, I played d4, and like, you know, I probably shouldn't have even taken on c5. Maybe I could have waited. You know, taking on c5 was probably very premature. Maybe I could play bishop e2, but taking on c5, I like to open the diagonal. Engine likes it too. e6 was good. This was all good. This was all good. Everything's still favorable to white. Um, a3 was probably slightly inaccurate. I didn't like this because of bishop b7. Excuse me, castles and queen e2, but I didn't like knight b4. This is the whole thing. So I should just castle and play like e4. There's some Joe Bava games like that. Castle, queen e2, e4. That's what I went for. But a3 just kind of changes a lot of stuff. This should be seven castles, castles, queen e2. Yep. And we, we fast forward. Fast forward. We get here. I was getting in time trouble. And I definitely blundered here with rook f to e1. Because I wanted to play something like bishop f1 eventually. Some tactics along the diagonal. Bishop e2. I forgot that queen c6 not only hits this, it's not really hitting it, but bishop c7 is what he really wanted, which is really annoying. Really annoying. So I go rook f1, he go bishop c7, I'm like, ah, oh, this is tough, I'm already in trouble. So queen f4, he takes with the rook, and here I'm actually equal if I play the g3. I saw this though. I saw this. Let me see what the engine says. They say g3, rook h6, this is what I saw. I saw bishop c1. And I saw like moving the rook to like g6 or e6. I e3, bro. Get out of here, <laughs> bro. What? Like, <laughs> it's an engine move for real, bro. I'm like, and I was also low on time, so like, the bro, that's sick. That's just insane. But it's actually equal there, by the way. Says the engine. That's insane. I saw rook h6 though, and I was like, okay, rook h6. I also saw I could play knight c5. I just didn't want this because I'm down a pawn and his rook is out. I didn't like it. Maybe I could, you know, win the pawn back. This is the route you have to take and practical chances. So I went with the more practical sense of going bishop c1 first to try to stop the rook, you know, and then go g3. But he plays knight c3, which is really strong. Really strong. Because if you take this knight, <laughs> have a good night. Bruh. You're going to need all of it after, uh, you know, Rook takes G2, my guy. You know, you just get this man off the board, right? What are you doing with your life? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, do you understand me? 
What are you doing? You take it, you get mated immediately. You move the king, you take the queen. This is over, right? Start a new game. Hit the button. Resign right now. So, knight c3, I cannot take this knight at all. At all. Best move is g3, actually. Let him take the rook. I take his, and then he goes back to c3. I go queen f5 because now I'm on tricks. Now it's just all tricks because there's, li there's literally nothing I can do. Actually, wow. Engine says here I'm equal after bishop g5. What the? What the? Okay, so what about f6? you got to be kidding me. f6? You take it and I'm winning? What? I am baffled by this. I don't even believe this. I don't believe this. So what happens after pawn takes? You go bishop h7. Get out of here. Oh my goodness, chat. I didn't think this was going to be a tactic session. But unbelievable that this is real. This is plus 15. After king takes, you have queen h5. And then king here. And then check. And then king f8. I mean, there's mate. Oh, bishop h6 mate. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And if king here, you go bishop f6. That is nuts. I definitely, I mean, I'm not looking at, I didn't see all of that, obviously. Didn't see all of that. That's freaking crazy. F6. Knight F6. Pawn takes and Bishop H7. And if King G7, then you play Rook E7. And if King F8, are you ready for this chat? Ha! <laughs> Bro, find the best move. Bruh. Find the best move, right? Ha! <laughs> Get the, man, you gotta be kidding me. This is a family channel, bro. This is a family channel. We got kids watching this. Y'all know that, right? Oh, my goodness. I am, I mean, I analyze this, but I'm analyzing it more for you guys and then realize that this is all here now. But this is, this is ridiculous. Find the best move, chat. Find the best move for white in this position. What do you do? You gotta be kidding me. There's only one. Oh, my goodness. There it is, of course. I see it from Jeff and Chess Riddle with Rook takes C7. <laughs> Bro, you gotta be kidding me. Queen sack after Queen takes Bishop H6, King E8, Bishop G6, mate. Bruh. Moment of silence. Moment of silence. Moment of silence. What up, Jay Stone? What's good, girl? Moment of silence. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's disgusting, bro. That's disgusting. I never, I didn't even see none of this. I have never seen any of this. And if rook takes c7, queen takes c7, right? You go queen takes f6. Queen f7, we go queen h8, queen, and then of course queen g8, and queen g8 is made. This is gross. We need some milk. You gotta be kidding me, bro. You gotta be. I didn't see none of that. Of course I ain't pin no Bishop G5. That was all in Bishop G5. You gotta be kidding me. So I play Queen F5. I just play Queen F5 and like hope for the best. Power to Bishop pair. Yeah. Gary would have found Bishop G5. Yeah, I mean, but also was in time trouble as well. So I mean it is what it is. It's kind of level combo for real. 315, I do. I've been 315, bro. I've been 315 for seven, my guy. So if you want to get technical there, 315 pounds for seven reps. Once we go to 10. 10 reps, then I'll do 405. Until then, I'm only sticking to 315. So, right now, that's a new PR, by the way. Just hit that. Okay. We have fun. Bro, what you eating? <laughs> Same thing chicken, rice, broccoli, potatoes, like, you know, protein shakes. Hitting, hitting the weights, bro. Hitting the heavy weight, bro. All right. So, I go queen at five. Queen at five. G6. Three. I go queen h3. This is just losing. Knight takes. I take it with the rook. Man's on three plates, or is it 315 for four? No, 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 no. 315 for seven reps. Three plates on each side. My guy. Bruh. My leg. For sure, bro. Yes, sir. 315. I, I warm up with 135. 135 for 30 reps. Right. 135 for 30. 35 for 30. You're smiling better. Always makes that oh, spiral. was good, bro. Rook takes e4 and f5. After F5, uh, this Another is over. One. This is completely over. Yuki, thanks for the five months, bro. I forgot to tell you I'm missing out on wearing my COE today because they were in my bags. Hopefully, I can get them soon. That's okay, Yuki. Huh. When, you, when you're wearing a COE out in the street, 
let me know uh, by the way thank you for all the orders guys we got tons of orders too especially being uh the holiday season here boom here we go um of course we got a lot of orders showing it from the last youtube channel or youtube video as well if you saw it coe calculation oh. over everything shop canty merch.com make sure i use it as well go in there go crazy do your thank thank of course merry christmas and happy holidays to all you guys so back to it where were we we were right here somewhere okay nope not there perfect coe that's right every wheel exactly right every time what's up munich what's the deal so i'm losing this game right i'm losing this game i go back to e1 with the rook, rookie one All right he goes rookie eight i play with the coe gear on i win i try to gain without it and i lost and draw draw your own con conclusions i know pepper look hey don't tell nobody bro you know what i mean like that's real talk huh. i understand rookie eight takes takes and I'm, I'm just losing here i'm just losing here's like queen c6 again like you know this is over was this played online this is otb this is an otb game i played against a very strong international master you playing augusto yeah i played augusto and he came with a buddy i crushed his buddy like it was it was amazing it was probably my it, it was absolutely my best game of the tournament um was playing his buddy who was like 2380 and i beat him in this same opening but this opening he played something different where like it was strange and i wasn't as familiar with that and they, i got into a bad position but um shout out to him yeah is there f4 oh, that boy from st pete oh yeah he's strong boy he's strong is there f4 yeah i mean the problem is like queen e1 like made in the here i don't have any checks my game is just bad pieces look bad so i go queen f1 he goes queen e7 and this is just minus two f4 this should be two and I get here, and I'm thinking I'm okay, which I am. I'm okay. Like, I'm literally okay. But his king is more active. Let me tell you something about endgames, chat. Do your endgames. Do your endgames. Do your endgames. I highly recommend. Um, you know, depending on your level, you can start with, you know, I started with Pandolfini's endgame course, which is a very old book. I think in that book, they even say, like, king to pawn four like pawn to bishop seven you know like <laughs> stupid stuff it be, i don't know that description that that notation i'm not that familiar with right but i am like i've seen it in there right and i know it was something like that penalty is good but they this day and time what you need to start with a reassess your chest and not reassess your chest is a good one jeremy Silman's book the uh in-game course that's a fire one the in-game course goes through all the levels and then you can go to devoretsky so you should do both you should start with the Seelman's in-game course, and then as soon as you finish, then you go to Devoreski. That's the order. But you need to do your in-games for sure. And, you know, this is just a losing in-game completely. Yes, we have the same amount here, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It's the same pawns. But because his king can get here faster, right? And mine is defensive and his is more attacking, he can win the game. He's just winning. It's minus two right here. Bruh. That's crazy. And it's the same material. It's just the placement, right? It's very important about how, how active your pieces are. So after king f7, king g2, king e6, I bring it all the way around. I get my king to e3, but this is a this is not a draw. H5, he expands. Bishop a1, and I'm just sitting. He can maneuver. I play some moves. This is over. I'm also low on time, by the way. Knock it through an in-game earlier and touch this. Yeah, it's very important. It's probably only winning. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just it's very important. I Dan 2. Thanks for the prime, by the way. I Dan 2. Thank you for that prime. C4. I mean, I play this. Uh, sorry, F5, H4. Take, I'm just completely losing. This is nothing I can do. He has a pass pawn here. He has everything under control. It's completely losing. But I just play the moves on just to see if I'm able to win this or if I'm able to draw it. After king d3, I'm running out of time. I don't even, I mean, I'll probably have like 30 seconds left. So I resign here. And I lose this game, um, which was a, a, it was okay. It was a learning experience here. I'm, I'm familiar now of what to do against the a6 line, but I wasn't at the time, right? So here, and I, I tried to play too aggressive. I played a3. The e4 early was too much. But you learn from it, right? When you lose, you have to learn, right? The, the L's are lessons. So you take uh, what you take from here is, you know, of course, when you see this type of structure, e4 is not the move. In fact, c4 is the move. A3 was a little bit premature. You usually go for a4. But I studied these lines a little bit more deeply as well. And I learned from it. So hopefully you guys learned some, from thing, something from this as well. This was round six. We're going to do round seven, eight, and nine. And then we're going to go to U.S. Masters, which is my best tournament I've ever played. And then we're going to go through that, you know. And then uh, we keep grinding. 
you're doing our thing, thanks for watching. Hit the sub button on YouTube if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next video.